Hey everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to 2021. I've been doing some work on the plane lately and I believe I owe you an update. Well, hopefully many of you joined in on the 31 day build challenge over the Christmas and the holidays and got a lot of work done. As you can see behind me, I've got a few more things done on my project. And let me give you a quick walk around on what's been done in the last 30 days. So as you can see, the cabin frame is on, click out in place. And what I've done here is I've put it up on the table, supported the front by another table, uh, got my zero ref, which is on top of the cabin frame. So I've got uh, zero completely level on top of the cabin frame. The rear, as it comes up, the plans show to be at 12 degrees. The belly of the plane is at three, and then the firewall is supposed to be 100 degrees back. So essentially about a 10 degree tilt on the firewall. So all those things are in check, uh, and I want to make sure that was all uh, one to one before I put the cabin frame in and start drilling any holes, just to make sure everything is level and straight. Uh, I took a level to the firewall going across the firewall to make sure there's no twist from side to side. Uh, obviously, you don't have any twist in the aircraft, but I think that's a very critical point because of the forward landing gear, no strut, of course, if that had a tilt, then uh, at the bottom of it, it would be way off. So anyway, it's on the table, everything's squared up, the cabin frame is drilled out to final hole size. There is a cabin frame L angle gusset on the forward part of the cabin frame that I still need to drill out. Then all the holes will be drilled, and what I'll do then is remove the cabin frame, deburr it, clean it all out, and what I'd like to do, this is a steel tube frame, chromoly, and what I'd like to do is get some paint and basically hold this thing upside down and pour paint directly into the tube, let it fill the tube up completely, flip it over, drain the paint out, so that way I've got some great corrosion protection on the inside of the tubing. Now I'm sure everybody isn't doing this, and it'll probably be years and years and years for that type of corrosion to have any effect on this whatsoever. Um, but I'm in Florida, very humid environment, and I want this thing to last forever, if possible. As you can see, the firewall is in place. It's not totally installed yet. Uh, it's clamped in place at the cabin frame, at the bottom belly of the fuselage, but the sides, uh, or on the side skin, still have to be back drilled through the firewall, which is pre-drilled on the flange side. So you back drill through the skin, and then click go and rivet. So that is yet to be done, but I wanted to make sure that everything was, again, all together and kind of mocked up, if you will, before I drilled any of the holes so everything's good and square. A few changes since I decided to build this thing. Um, this is the Cruiser, not the Stoll version of the uh, Zenith CH750 Cruiser. And it came with these baby tires, um, five by five, and I discussed with Zenith that I might be visiting more people off airport than on airport and I had a concern about maybe catching a gopher hole or something like that. So ultimately I decided to swap out my wheel tire brake package because you go from a five inch to a six inch, then of course your wheels and your, your brakes and all that kind of stuff um, together has to change. So I went to a six inch wheel and more so the stole configuration on the nose fork, which is also different. The nose tire is the factory size CH750 Stoll size tire. On the mains, I was gonna go to the factory size Stoll tire as well, but they've got an option now to go up one size bigger or a couple sizes bigger on the Stoll, which is a 21 inch on the mains. So factory size, which I can't remember what that is at the moment, on the nose wheel, and then going up to the 21 inch tire on the mains. Now I know there's gonna be a speed penalty for doing this, because the Cruiser had the smaller tires plus wheel pants, but I feel that I would rather give up a few miles an hour of speed for the safety of having bigger, cushy pillows to land on when I go visit you at your off airport location. Now along with that change, something else I also wanna to do to improve more of its short field uh, capabilities if you followed it all uh, on the Zenith forums, there's a guy by the name of Jonathan Fay. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, he did a really great write-up on installing VGs on his cruiser. 
and I believe that's the route I'll be taking with mine as well, um, on a, not only on top of the wing, but on the tail surfaces as well. And I think I'll do an entire episode just around that. I'd like to get Jonathan on and speak about everything that he's done and the kind of research he did, the way he installed it, because I think he did a great job of explaining it in print. And maybe I can share that with you in a video. Everyone, I invite you after this video to go check out the sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Wheeland Aerospace Technologies, Clemens Insurance Agency. Without their support and your support, this simply wouldn't happen. So thank you. I'm still trying to figure out whether I'm going to be flying this thing 100% in daytime VFR, which is probably more likely the case, but just in the event that I will be flying at night, I am a private pilot, I am going to go ahead and install a complete lighting package. And for that, I spoke with uh, Wheelan Aero Technologies, which is flywatt.com now, um, and they make a really great product for lighting, for both your landing light, um, taxi lights, and your position lights. So I've got a complete package from Wheelan Aerospace Technology to use on my build here. Now one of the things I'm thinking about doing, of course, I'm, I'm using two lights in the wings. I just, I love symmetry. I love having that balance. I'm gonna have one light in each wing tip. Gonna have the wigwag feature for um, being able to, you know, collision avoidance type thing. But I also, ordered another uh, set of lights and I'm either going to mount them on the belly of the plane, probably at the landing gear, or I've also considered doing something in the wing facing down, kind of like how Mike did in the Draco. And I know this obviously gives you a lot more lighting when you're taxiing, but also at that angle when you're approaching, I think is another great collision avoidance to be spotted with all these lights flashing going on. So for me, it mainly be probably in the morning, you know, dusk and dawn type flying that uh, I'll probably end up using that, but I think it would be cool to have regardless. So Wheelan Aerospace Technologies makes a great product. Um, it shows really well that the, the quality of their product. Um, I invite you to check them out. Okay, so other updates. Uh, Chris at Airworks is working on my engine, of course. Uh, I understand the crankshaft is done. I think he's rolling into the uh, the case itself next, and then the cylinders. And he said that more than likely we'll be able to get together again the end of this month, which is January, or early on in February. So we'll be traveling back to Airworks so I can give you an inside look of how my engine goes together. So the plan was to have this thing on the gear before Christmas. I'm almost there. I'm about ready to get the weldment installed on either side. That holds on to the landing gear. There is unfortunately a back order on the uh, the big 21 inch tires from Zenith and I think just across the board uh, there's a everybody's buying tires right now I guess everybody's finishing their aircraft and flying them so hopefully in a couple weeks um, hopefully within two weeks I'll get the tires in this will be on the gear and I'll get it to sit on the ground finally off the table. So the plan is to get all the metal work done right away in the next few months have all the airframe all the metal work done um, wings all that kind of stuff so that I can get to that 90 percent done 90 percent to go because i realize there's gonna be a lot of time spent on getting the engine mounted and getting that plumbed getting the wiring done avionics paint and then to actually get the thing to start up for the first time in taxing so i want to be flying before the end of 2021 so a lot of work to do, but I think I can get there. Just have to work on it, something, every day. And on that note, I want to say a quick thank you to everybody that's posted in the group, not only during the 31 day challenge, but throughout the year. Um, Vance Simmons, I want to say, I think is probably the biggest poster of all. He posts literally something every day, if not almost every day. So thank you, Vance, for being an encouragement to not only me, but your fellow builders. I appreciate it. So another thing I've been working very hard on over this Christmas and uh, holidays is finally getting around to building an actual website for Experimental Aircraft Channel. So it's almost done. I'd say it's about half done. Um, working on that now, along with that will come a store and some merchandise and some cool things like that. I know it's been a long time coming, but trying to do all the things it just has taken a little bit of time getting that done. So that's almost done, almost ready. The holidays are over. 
2021 is here, so it's time for me to get back on the road, start interviewing great people like you. So I'll be hitting the road here in the next week or so, get you some more original aviation content. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, help me reach more people about experimental, light sport, and ultralight aviation. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.